This is Three Poems for Psyche by A.E. Stallings. One, the eldest sister to Psyche. This palace, those invisible hands that stroke the music from thin air, call it magic. Everywhere the haunted rooms obey commands, and yet it sounds like loneliness. Yes, I'm that ugly sister, true. You'll say I only envy you. The fact, I know your secret guess, surrendered blind to his embrace, you dared not look. A human voice, you thought. You never had a choice. Perhaps a monster face to face, with scales and fangs and leathern wings. What of the fetus that you carry? For certain it is human? Very? Doubt burns like hot wax. It stings. Doubt burns. Like hot wax, it stings. For certain, it is human. Very. What are the fetus that you carry with scales and fangs and leathern wings, perhaps? A monster. Face to face, you thought you never had a choice. You dared not. Look, a human voice surrendered blind to his. Embrace the fact. I know your secret. Guess. You'll say I only envy you. Yes, I'm that ugly, Sister True. And yet, it sounds like loneliness. The haunted rooms, obey commands, call it magic. Everywhere that stroke, the music, from thin air, this palace, those invisible hands. The Boatman to Psyche on the River Styx. Only a few have come here still alive, heroes seeking immort immortality, lovers who refuse to grieve. They are found out by gravity. How they unbalance the scow with one foot still on the key and the other stepping into the prow, while evil-smelling bilge comes seeping up through the planks, as it is doing now. The sorry hound is usually sleeping, three heads, no brain. But his job is keeping the inmates in. He has no reason to keep the living out. All will come here in their own sweet season. Perhaps you thought no one would notice you among so many, but you are not the shadow of a doubt. You are the thing itself. Your shiny penny will pay your passage, though it should be double. You are two if you are any. You quibble? Aren't you a double tongue upon the earth and twice the trouble? Gravid girl, you're far gone. I feel the quickening obscene here where all frenzy is done. Sickening. A thing like that. A specter that looms out of the queasy future, ticking and ticking like a kind of bomb. An x-ray developing in your chemical bath. Your dark room. You wonder how a blind man finds his path over the swamp of hate, the river of wrath. My eyes are ultrasound. I echo-locate like the pipistrels that drop their slick of guano on the sloping slate. Treacherous footing. Here's our stop. So, you're on an errand to the queen to borrow her beauty like a pot of makeup. It's true that she has stayed just seventeen. The sun can't spoil her looks. Her lips are stained with grenadine. And here, there are only stopped clocks and no reflections. A hint. If she gives you a wooden box, yea, big, scarcely big enough for an infant, don't open it. Though you crave a peek, a, a free sample. You say you won't, but the living have a flair for narrative. What if I tell you all the beauty ever worn by loveliness was borrowed from the grave and belongs to the unborn? Three, Persephone 
to Psyche. <laughs> Come sit with me here at the bar. Another Lethe for the bride. You're pregnant? Well, of course you are. Make that a virgin suicide. Me and my man, we try to spell a, a pharmacopoeia of charms, and yet, when I am lonesome, well, I, I rock the stillborns in my arms. This place is dead, a, a real dive. We're all, we're past all twists, rewards, and perils, but what the hell, we all arrive. Here, have some pomegranate arrows. I heard an old wives' tale above when I was a girl, with a girl's treasure. The story went soul married love, and they conceived and called her pleasure. In Anadonia, we take our bitters with hypnotic waters. The dawn's always about to break, but never does. We dream of daughters. <laughs>